Here's a really cool differential equation from Michael Penn. And I'm going to approach this differently than the way he solved it. First up, we're going to write this as the second derivative of y being equal to negative e to the y. And notice that if I multiply the equation by the first derivative, that's y prime, then I have some really nice structures to work with. Starting off with the left-hand side, if you analyze the first derivative squared, and if you differentiate this, then you get, because of the power rule, you have 2 times y prime, and because of the chain rule, you have y double prime. So this implies that the left-hand side of your equation, that's y prime times y double prime, equals 1 half y prime squared prime. And as far as the right-hand side is concerned, notice that if I take the derivative with respect to x of e to the y, then that gives me e to the y times y prime again because of the chain rule. So that means I can translate my differential equation into something that looks a lot nicer. I can write this as 1 half y prime squared prime equal to negative e to the y prime. And this is really cool because that means if I integrate, then what I get is 1 half of y prime squared being equal to negative e to the y plus some constant of integration a. And if I multiply by 2, then what I get is y prime squared being equal to negative 2 times e to the y, and 2 times a is just another constant, so I'll just absorb the 2 into a. And if I use the square root, then what I get is y prime being equal to either positive or negative square root a minus 2 times e to the y. And now this is just a separable differential equation. So writing this as first dy by dx and then separating the variables and integrating and stuff, I can say that I have the integral with respect to y of the reciprocal of uh, a minus 2 times e to the y. And wait, let me just give myself some more writing space. So 1 by square root a minus 2 times e to the y, both the positive and the negative cases dy equal to the integral of dx. So the right-hand side is just x plus some other constant of integration b, and I'm now interested in evaluating this integral that I'm, that I'm going to call i for the time being. So I have this integration problem to work with now, and notice I've dropped the positive and negative signs because I can just pop them back in at the end of the solution. So yeah, just ignore them for now. And a good strategy to approach this integral would be to expand using e to the negative y. So if I write this as the square root of e to the negative 2y and just multiply out the terms here, I can write i as the integral of e to the negative y dy divided by square root a times e to the negative 2y minus 2 times e to the negative y. Okay, cool. And now let's make a substitution where we let e to the negative y equal u, which implies that negative e to the negative y dy equals du. So this implies that i equals the negative of the integral of du divided by square root a u squared minus 2 times u. Okay, cool. And next up, let's complete the square for the argument inside the square root. So if I factor out an a term, I can write this as du divided by u squared minus 2 by a u, and the square root of a is outside, and that's just a constant, right? So I have negative 1 by root a, integral du divided by square root, u squared minus 2 by a u plus uh, the reciprocal of a is what's needed to complete the square. So add this and subtract this. Okay, cool. So that means I have negative 1 by root a times the integral of du divided by square root u minus 1 by a squared minus 1 by a squared. And now let's make another substitution, a hyperbolic one this time. So let's make the substitution by letting u minus 1 by a equal to 1 by a times the cosh of some other variable, let's call it t. 
So this implies that du equals 1 by a times the cinch of t dt. So how does our integral transform in the t world? Well, that means i equals negative 1 by root a times the integral of 1 by a times the cinch of t dt divided by the square root of 1 by a squared times the square of the cosh of t minus 1 by a squared. And of course you can factor out a 1 by a squared term from the denominator, meaning that you can write this as negative 1 by root a times the integral of 1 by a times the cinch of t dt divided by factoring out the 1 by a squared, and the square root turns it into a 1 by a term, and you have to multiply it by the square of the cosh of t minus 1. Now, these two cancel out quite nicely, and this argument here equals the square of the cinch of t, and the square root cancel the square, so again, you have some nice cancellation happening here again. So all of this implies that i equals negative 1 by root a, times the integral of dt, which of course sorts out to the t variable. Now how exactly did we define the t variable? Well, here it is. So that implies that t equals the inverse cosh of au minus one. Uh, okay, yeah, that's pretty much it. So this implies that i equals negative one by root a times the inverse cosh of this Aussie boy here, minus one. Now recall that we had an integral in the y realm. So how exactly did we define the u variable? Well, we defined it as u equal to e to the negative y. So this implies that i equals negative one by root a times the inverse cosh of a times e to the negative y minus one. And the differential equation led us to believe that plus or minus this integral i equaled x plus b. So you have these plus and minus signs and minus sign over here. So still you have both positive and negative solutions. One by root a times the inverse cosh of a times e to the negative y minus one equals x plus b. So this is a solution in as expressed as x in terms of y, but with a bit more work we can get y in terms of x as well. So let's just do a bit more work here. So we have the inverse cosh of a times e to the negative y minus one equal to plus or minus x times root a plus b times root a. Again, another constant along with the plus and minus sign. So let's just call it c. Okay, so this implies we have a times e to the negative y equal to one plus the cosh of plus minus x times root a plus c. And now we can use logarithms as well after, of course, multiplying by the reciprocal of a. So with logarithms, we get negative y equal to log and of course, using the properties of the logarithm, you can reciprocate the argument, and that gives us a divided by one plus cosh uh, plus or minus x times root a, which is just another constant anyway, so you can rena rename it anything else you want. So I'm just gonna leave it as root a because it looks cooler for some reason. I'm not sure why, but yeah, it does look kind of cool. Plus another constant of integration, c. So there you have it, that's our final answer. And yes, Penn's expression of the final solution is a lot better than mine. It's a lot prettier than mine. But this was a pretty interesting differential equation and I enjoyed solving it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you, see you next time.